Welcome to another special edition of Max Stories. Yeah, we bring you exceptional Nigerians who do exceptional things and affect the country in a very, very positive manner. With me today, all right? So, guys, she's very, very exceptional. She has um, a unique kind of talent and I would say a profession along the way. Her name is Olabanke Subar. I got it? Yes, you did. Oh, thank God I did. <laughs> High How five. You doing? What's going on? Ah, yes, Hi. I got a pass for that, right? Yes, you did. Thank you. They taught me well in primary school. <laughs> so how are you doing, dear? What's up? Fine, thank you. Thanks for having me. Please, my pleasure. My pleasure. You're quite exceptional. So we said, hey, why not bring you on the show and let's talk about what you do. Okay, so let's start from, uh, just give us a few uh, background of yourself. So my name is Ola Banke Subar. I'm the creative director and founder of Cyrus 45 Factory, mm. which is an art-inclined, eco-friendly furnishings company that converts solid waste mm -hmm. into ultra-modern products. So what we do is we pick up tires yeah. from the roadsides and we make them into furniture pieces and other like functional items. Mm. So what was the inspiration? Is it that you were driving one day <laughs> on the road? You no know, tire, tire, tire. I wish. <laughs> What can they do in this Legos that will make this thing win? No, no. What made you get into this in the first place? I don't sound cliche. Yeah. But it was no, God. It was now. God. It was God. <laughs> Not a joke. God said, I don't I see that tire. Yes. Out. Are you serious? It was coincidental. So in 2016, I was living with my big sister okay. at the time and I was working as a blogger because mm -hmm. I used to be in the media space. And then, you know, her neighbors wanted to throw away a pile of 20 tires. Okay. So, you know, I've always been a lover of revamping old items. I used to revamp my old earrings to mm -hmm. brooches mm -hmm. to, you know, embellishments and the likes. So they were like, ah, they're going to throw tires. I'm like, ah, don't throw the tires away. Give them to me. I'll figure out what to do with them. Bear in mind, I did not know what I was going to do. <laughs> I did not know what I was going to do with the tires. Yeah. But thanks to technology, I'm a very creative mind. Mm -hmm. I searched online and I realized that if you, you know, put wood on that, it's a circle now, you can mm -hmm. form a table. True. And I made my first coffee table and that's how the business started. So being doing creative um, alcohol, it, it can be called creative Yeah, it is. No, it is. Actually, I actually call it creative Okay, so yeah. is it something you studied in school? or you were doing something else in school, but you were just, you had love for creative. Oh, yeah, so I actually studied French. Oh. Yes, at Obafemao Law University. That's lovely. <laughs> yes, but I've always been creative. Okay. It's an innate thing. Okay. You know, I, I used to draw when I was younger. I write, I write oh, poetry, nice. I even have a poetry blog. So I've always been a creative, you know, from birth. Mm -hmm. So that's why I decided to branch out into that space instead of pursuing a career in, with French. Or mm. So French, Zida, did you go and get uh, certified for this or, you just, you know, continue the practice and it got better over time. Did you go and do any training with anybody? No, how? no, I didn't. I mean, like I said, thank, thank God for technology. You know, you can learn anything with the click of a button. True. Yes. And thanks to, you know, working experience from, you know, working on the job. Yes. I learned a, a few things about carpentry, furniture mm -hmm. making. But right now, because I mean, you die when you stop learning. So I'm currently enrolled in a program okay. and I'm learning about enterprise skills, entrepreneurial skills mm -hmm. and, and the likes. Mm -hmm. so, now, you said something about carpentry and in this part of the world, yeah, when we hear carpenter, is it that Mufu or Kuli <laughs> or Tuli or yeah. Wali? Yeah, I'm just joking when I play, but or it's shukura. usually or shukura, nah, <laughs> it's, it usually, it's, it's usually it's a male dominated kind yeah. of profession. If you want to carry heavy stuff, yeah. it's expected of a man, not a woman. So you decided to get into this um, industry, this part of this kind of profession. Were you not scared that ah, would they accept me carrying, fixing, nailing, all that? Of course, I mean, I was because, like you said, it's a male dominated industry. Mm -hmm. And I mean, you have skeptical clients who will be like, oh, yeah, a woman, how are we sure you can do this work well? Yeah. But you know, when I first started, I mean, I didn't start on my own. I contracted artisans, okay. yes, to work with me. But apart from that, I can also, like, you know, make some of my products. Okay. And you know what they say, what a man can do. <clears throat> a woman can do better. Say what now? Yeah. <laughs> so it was just, you know, an avenue or a platform for me yeah. to prove myself okay. and also to shake some tables that see, you push should stop downgrading. You are broken you No, know, <laughs> downgrading women. We yeah. can't do what you say we cannot do. Huh. So yeah, I'm proving myself. You said you studied French. Yes. And um, you went to university for like four <laughs> years. Yes, that. yes. And your parents were paying school fees, right? Okay. Yes. Now, <laughs> How did they feel when you said, ah, mommy, daddy, <laughs> this friend too, this is not what I want to do, right? How was their reaction to you when you said this is the line of profession you wanted to get into? Were they supportive? Were they, uh, 
that now? Okay, so thankfully, I have very supportive... I mean, I stay with just my mom. Okay. Yes, yeah, so okay. I have a very supportive mom. When I was young, I mean, I used to draw. She bought me my first paint set, oh, you know. Nice. Mom, nice. I want to draw a paint set. I remember one time I really liked music. She bought me a guitar oh. for my 18th birthday. I can never forget. I was most surprised. I'm like, you know, but I never pursue that. <laughs> so I've always had that kind of mother that was very, or that is very supportive of okay. anything I do. So when I told, of course, she was a bit skeptical. Are you sure you don't want to do a nine to five? You know, the money is more, you know, steady. Yeah. It's more like, you know, guaranteed. And I told her, this is what God said. This is what I want to do. And I mean, she's even my momager slash manager. Ah, that's good. <laughs> right that's now, good. yeah. So yeah, so she's very supportive all the way, a hundred and fifty percent. Now, speaking about um, this profession now, so can you just tell us a little bit of the things you face? You know, knowing that first of all, you're female in this industry, and it is new to people. Yes. What are the challenges you face? I mean, I think the primary challenge I faced was actually funding. Because I think that's what most entrepreneur, entrepreneurs, be female or male, that's what they face, you know, getting, you know, the right amount of capital. And I do furniture, so it's very capital intensive. True, true. So, you know, money was a problem. Mm -hmm. But thanks to, like, you know, family and friends who were, like, some form of angel investors that gave me money to start up, mm -hmm. that's why I could even start the business. I think the second thing was finding the right people to work with in terms yeah. of artisans because unfortunately most of the artisans are not literate so you know communicating the creative design you know i do the design i'm trying to tell them this is what i want to do and by the time they finish making it it looks like a scarecrow <laughs> <laughs> so it's very frustrating because i'm like no i showed you this why yeah, are you doing why are you this making that? you yeah. know so and but it also helped me to train them mm. you know like you know an informal kind of training True. you know to have an eye for creativity mm -hmm. you know and the like so those were the few challenges and getting the right personnel like in terms of ad administrative personnel no, because sadly again the use of these days you just want Quick instant money. gratification just money like where's the money where the money at like has, i don't want to yeah, work yeah. so i got a lot some people on board but after a while they just wanted money money and i'm like the patience like you know it's not easy so yeah that's really three things i actually faced when starting so do you actually go dirty do you actually nail ah. stuff do you carry wood do you yes yeah, so you do all that yes i do of ah. course i don't believe in like you know being like a bench warmer yeah. or like a you know, viewer. Like, mm. no, I don't do that. I, I believe in being very hands-on, you know. So I do, like, now what we do is the um, line, the, um, what's it called, the breakdown of the production is that I go to the roadside with some of my team. Mm -hmm. We pick up tires from the road, from incinerators. We wash them. Dirty tile, that's yeah. right yeah. inside. Yeah, yeah, I know. You know, we wash them. And when it comes to, like, spray painting or some of the, like, you know, minor, minor carpentry work, yeah. I do them, of course, I do. And that's, speaking about going to the road, do you have, because I know that if people just, go to road and pick stuff, you definitely probably have to pay some certain kind of people in the area. Welcome to Nigeria. Nigeria. There's always a Nigerian factor when it comes I know. to this thing. So how do you handle that? Knowing that, okay, you want to help society, yes. but you have to pay to help the society. Yes, oh, yeah. unfortunately. So um, thankfully, um, so when we go tire hunting, it's also an avenue for us to sensitize and create awareness on the importance of proper waste disposal mm -hmm. and also um, upcycling and recycling. Mm -hmm. So when we go to the roadside, and you know, most of these guys, your money, they see us, yeah. that are it, what are you doing there? Yeah. Yeah. But like, is it, you know, of course, we ask them questions, is it your own? Is it your own? Is it your own? Yeah, who is it? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I'm like, it's dirt. So I try to like, unfortunately, my yoga is not so good, but I try to let them know that, see, we're trying to like do good with this. Yes. You know, of course, we tip them once in a while, but not every time. Yeah. Some of the areas we go to, they already know us, so they okay. don't need to like, you know, harass us. They'd be like, ah, leave her, leave her, she yeah. wants to, she's, she's helping also, the she's environment. Helping keep, keep yes, keep. yes, yeah, exactly. Yeah, I so I think it's just in sensitization and awareness. People will just, they'll leave you. Hmm. If you create awareness. Very, very insightful. Very insightful. I told you guys we're going to bring in exceptional, <laughs> you know, intelligent stuff. So, uh, back before you leave us, just uh, for people out there who probably want to delve into this kind of business, um, what is that thing that you think they should always, you know, look out for first to before they start or venture into something like this? Since it's, uh, it's a new baby in Nigeria growing up, well, what was that thing that you gave them as inspiration? Um, I think, firstly, I would, I would say, find your, your inspiration mm. like what's going to drive you and also do your research you know and find out who is in the market what, what they're doing how far they've gone how can you disrupt the space mm -hmm. because i mean when i first came on the scene i wasn't the first okay but a lot of people believe i am like yeah. when people go out and see tire furniture they stick a picture and send to me i'm like, I see, I'm like it's not my it's own not yours, yeah. please don't put me in trouble yeah you get so just i mean make sure you disrupt the space be creative mm -hmm. stay true to yourself be authentic don't be an imitator don't be copying people mm -hmm. just keep innovating and the sky would not even be your limits 
To enjoy more of this, our Ogunke videos when you just watch. Press this button to subscribe on top of our YouTube page. You go love her.